All right, guys, let's get through the rigmarole roll first before we get into the podcast. Where, guys, this podcast posts each and every single Wednesday. The first segment of the show, we go through all the Dolphins news you need to know about. The second segment of the show, we go through all the AFC East news you need to know about. The third segment of the show, we highlight all the players you need to know about on game day. And the fourth and final segment of the show, we go through the Miami Dolphins fan Q&A. So the first news story um, is considering the NFL waiver wire. Um, and how it's changed. This is a quick little story, uh, but if you're into this stuff, I thought we would get this. It's it's you know it's not the most interesting story in the world, so I thought we'd get this out of the way first. NFL waiver priority now based on 2017 record. This is by Zach Links of Pro, Fo- Pro Football Rumors. We're coming up we're coming up on week four of the NFL season, and that means the waiver wire claim priority will be based on the current league standings instead of last year. Of course, waiver priority is based on the inverted NFL standings, which we have built. In to tiebreakers to sort of many uh, to sort out many long jams that naturally occur throughout the off season in the first three weeks of the regular season the Browns enjoy top priority thanks to their 1 15 uh, record last year now we have a brand new pecking order here's a full rundown of the current waiver claim priority which will change from week to week so we're currently 13th on this pecking order just a quick little news story to get out of the way uh, but if you're into that kind of stuff if I feel like had to update you um so dolphins this is the biggest news of the the week i hope dolphins fans get hyped up uh for this um dolphins reinstate linebacker Lawrence timmons now this is great news we're gonna read it um and i'll give you my opinion afterwards but thank god this is happening i think this is going to improve the defense um as i wait for this article to load here dolphins reinstate linebacker Lawrence timmons this is by uh zach links of pro football rumors dolphins linebacker Lawrence timmons has been uh, has been reinstated by the team adam Scheffner of espn.com tweets has learned uh adam Scheffner has learned with his suspension has been lifted he will play on sunday versus the saints this is huge news uh, Timmons went uh, AWOL prior to Miami's Week 2 contest and was suspended indefinitely for conduct detrimental to the team. Uh, at the time of the ban, the Dolphins gave little indication as to whether Timmons would ever be able to rejoin the squad. We learned later that uh, Timmons left the team in L.A. Visit to, visit his, uh, to visit the mother of his child of, uh, in Pennsylvania. He did not notify the team of his plans beforehand. Um, Timmons reportedly visited the Steel. Uh, excuse me. Timmons reportedly visited the Steelers, his former team, during Miami's Week One bye, and watched the club practice. We don't know what ex- we don't know exactly what is going on with the veteran, but it sounds like homesickness is at least a part of it. The Dolphins managed to beat the Chargers without Timmons in Week Two, but they lost to the Jets on Sunday. Miami will look to get back on the right track this weekend against the Saints in London. Miami signed Timmons to a two-year, $12 million deal in the offseason. In 2016, he racked up 114 tackles, two and a half sacks, and two interceptions for the Steelers. When he went AWOL in Week 2, he missed his first game since 2009. So, obviously, when you lose one of your best players on defense and your starting linebacker on the weak side, maybe he's going to come back, he's going to play middle, I don't know. Um, This is going to 100% improve the play of the defense. Um, it's definitely going to be better. It's not going to get any worse. I feel like, you know, some of the some of the problems we've had coverage in the middle of the football field is definitely going to get better. Some of the problems we've had with Mike Holen coverage is definitely going to get better now. But from a schematic standpoint, things are going to get better. Matt Burke talked about it throughout the entire offseason. What Lawrence Timmons brings versatility to the defense and his ability to blitz the quarterback. And you saw, obviously... All of those blitzes that we were using is a big part of Matt Burke's defense. And as frustrating as it might be, it's going to be improved with Lawrence Timmons on the football field now because he is an elite linebacker at blitzing. And that was a huge thing that we were going to use him um, and utilize his ability to do that. And we still did that without him. Um, And we missed him in some of those plays. Now that I feel like that Matt Burke has the personnel for it now, he has better personnel to use some of those plays it's going to be more effective not only that but i think the coverage is going to be better with him coming back especially going up against a a very very good saints defense the good thing about the or saints offense excuse me the good thing about this is our run defense has been pretty good throughout without him so it's going to be even better with him um so that's going to be awesome um you know, and again, I think coverage is going to be better. I think communication is going to be better. Obviously, some of the stuff that we saw with players just not communicating right. We saw some busted coverages. We didn't see as much of that in the Jets game as we did in the Chargers game, which is, thank God. Um, but going up against Drew Brees and, you know, how he audibles at the line of scrimmage, he's constantly changing things. We're going to need communication to be 
at its best coming up on this this of uh, this upcoming Sunday. So having Lawrence Timmons back for that is is just tremendous. So he, you know, whether what he did, and you know, there's been rumors of, uh, for different things have came out of why he went AWOL and some of the things that he did at that Steelers practice. You know, I don't I don't know. We just still don't really know. But thank God he's back because again, he's a big part of the scheme. He's a big part of what Matt Burke likes to do. Um, and he should help some of those zone blitzes as well. So everything should everything should be improved with him coming back, which is great news. Um, so this next news story: Dolphins Jarvis Landry won't face charges. Um, and again, with the Lawrence Timmons thing, I think this is great. Um, regardless of what he did, I, it's going to improve the play on the football field, um, and it's going to help our defense. And again, with if we had him for the first two weeks, God only knows how many more turnovers we would have had how many more, you know, sacks we would have had, and how many, you know, we wouldn't have the shortcomings in coverage that we had as well. I hope, now that Lawrence comes back, that Chase Allen starts in the middle. If he, I mean, obviously, we, you don't want an undrafted first your rookie to start in the middle that quick, but he's played a couple games now. I would rather see Chase Allen start in the middle. If, if not, then put Lawrence in the middle and then start Kiko and Chase on the outside. Chase has been starting on the outside. He's done just fine doing it. He's done just fine. He's been dominating the tackle box. He's, when he's had to, and when he's been put in the position to have to make an open field tackle, he's made the open field tackle. So I hope that Mike Hole is out now that now that Lawrence is coming back. I hope Mike Hole is out of the starting lineup, and because he has been pretty, and I guarantee you that's going to be part of Sean Payne's game plan. So hopefully he's out of the lineup. Obviously the Saints love to use their running backs in the passing game. I mean that's been a hallmark of their offense for many years, back going back to the years when they were amazing with Jimmy Graham so hopefully Mike Cole is out of the starting lineup okay so let's move on to this story Dolphins Jarvis Landry won't face charges this comes from Pro Football Rivers um <clears throat> excuse me uh after being accused of battery earlier in August it sounds like Dolphins wideout Jarvis Landry won't face charges NFL.com's Ian Rappaport passes along via Twitter uh that um the that the Florida State attorney will not file charges of domestic violence um, so it goes on to just quote Jarvis here, and he's just saying how, you know, blah, just a bunch of blah, blah, blah. While Landry won't be charged with a crime, he may still face discipline from the NFL, according to Adam Beasley of the Miami Herald via Twitter. Meanwhile, NFL.com's Tom Palesso tweets that the, that the case can still remain under conduct pol- policy review. The initial incident took place o- earlier this year and involved the mother of Landry's child. The player has maintained his innocence, according to Beasley. It's unlikely the event that Landry will get suspended. It's, um, it's, uh, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, it's be quite the blow. It's been, it's just to say it's been, it's a typo. It's been quite the blow to the Dolphins offense throughout the first two games. The receiver has already hauled in. It would be quite the blow to the Dolphins, uh, offense. The receiver has already hauled in 19 receptions for 126 yards. The 2014 second round has been a standout in Miami over the past two seasons, averaging 102 receptions, um, 1,100 yards, and four receptions over that span. Landry has recently been pursuing a contract extension, although the team has yet to make him an offer. Coach Adam Gates was previously adamant that the ongoing legal issue had no impact on negotiations. So there you go. That's the, that's the, that's the latest on Juice Landry. Uh, I, I mean, he, the man, his mom, he's the mother of his child. So his baby mama came out and said the man was innocent. So I don't know why the NFL is continuing to look into this, um, and especially since it's his conduct policy. I mean, Jarvis Jarvis, if, Jarvis is the definition of a role model, for God's sakes. The man takes the NFL so seriously. Um, he's a great role model for players, I, I think. I mean, the man, is his passion alone, he's a great leader. I, I don't know. I, they're not going to suspend him. He did nothing wrong. So, I mean, if Zeke isn't getting suspended, then Juice definitely is not going to get suspended. All right, so let's move on to the AFC East news you need to know about. Um, And again, this Lawrence Timmons news, man, I'm telling you guys, this is going to help the defense. And, you know, I I really do believe it. And it's going to help the scheme. Um, So uh, this is just great news. I can't wait for him because he played so well in preseason. I mean, if you go back and watch that Eagles game, he was the, he was one of the best players of that game. He's obviously going up against the starters, picking off Carson Wentz, and just flying around to the football. So this is gonna it's gonna help our defense big time. Uh, so for Bills news, there's really nothing to talk about here. Uh, I guess we'll talk about their game against the Broncos. Um, 
you know, I thought it was weird. I mean, it's it was a weird day for football overall. Obviously, um, there was a lot of underdog game, especially the Bills. I mean, the Bills blew out the Broncos. It was a close game throughout the game until the fourth quarter, and then the, the Bills kind of dominated the fourth quarter. It wasn't like they just destroyed the Broncos throughout, the, you know, the entire game. But, again, weird. A bunch of really good teams on the road lost, and they did not play like – they didn't play like their normal selves. So it's very interesting. I don't know. It's something to keep your eye on. You know, the Bills, they're not running. They're more of a traditional offense this year. They're not running anything special. They're not running the triple option. They're not running any of this stuff. Their passing game has looked pretty bad through the first two games. That was by far the best game that they had in terms of passing the football. Um, so the running game, obviously, they lean, they lean very heavily on. Sean McDermott comes from the Carolina Panthers' motto of just run it down your throat. Um, and then the pass game will work off of that. So if you stop the running game, it's it it other than Tyrod running around like a crazy maniac with his hair on fire, you should be able to stop their um their offense. So again, that was a huge deal. Obviously, in the AFC right, the AFC East right now, instead of getting into news, I guess we'll talk about the AFC East because there's not a whole lot of news to talk about. In the AFC East right now, the Jets beat us, so they're one and two. We're one and one. The Bills are what? The Bills are they lost to. They're two and two, the 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 Patriots are two and two, right? So it's a pretty close division right now. No, the Patriots aren't two and two; they're uh, two and one. Um, so the it's it's a pretty close um division right now. It's any I mean seriously, um, you know I would have to pull up the schedule. Let me pull up the schedule of the Patriots really quick. Okay, so they play the Panthers this upcoming week. Uh, it's a one it's a one o'clock game, uh, on Fox. So again, the Patriots are two and one. So they got so after the after the Patriots or the Panthers they got the Buccaneers they got the Jets so those those are I mean the Jets they're gonna win that game at, on the road against the Buccaneers and at home for the Panthers are their next two. Carolina is a very good football team their defense is really good their secondary is way I've, I've watched every game because my brother is a Panthers fan their secondary for all the hate it gets it's very good the, James Bradbury Daryl Worley are very very good players um, I thought they've had a pretty good season so far their defensive line is. Their front seven is probably the best in the NFL, if you think about it. I mean, you got Keekley, you got Thomas Davis, you got Shaq Thompson off the edge on your D-line. You got Star Latule coming off the bench. You got K-1 Short, Mario, uh, Mar- uh, not Mario Addison. Um, I can't remember his name right now. Uh, they, got a, they got a lot of good edge rushers, and they got a lot of depth on the defensive line. So it, th- I think it's going to be a tough game for the Patriots, especially because, you know, that defense is really good. It's going to be up to the, the the Panthers' offense. The Panthers' offense has struggled for their first few games. So their chances of winning that game, I would say, is pretty dang good. I, I you know, maybe I'm biased, but I, I, I have faith in the, in the Panthers. Uh, they've, they've, I mean, again, the last time the Panthers played them, they beat them. It's relatively the same squad. It's just Cam Newton's been really rusty for the first, first few games, you know, coming off the shoulder surgery. So if he can get back to that... I think it'll be fine. But again, the AFC East is very close right now. Uh, they're 2-1 and one in the AFC East, the Patriots. I guess, who's first in the AFC East right now? I guess the Bills are? All right, let me correct myself here. So the Bills are first, the Patriots are second. So again, the AFC East is very tight right now. So the Bills play the Falcons in their com- upcoming game. The Patriots, we just talked about, they're playing the Panthers. So if they both lose to NFC South opponents... And we win. It's funny because we're all playing NFC South opponents this week. And if we win, we can leapfrog everybody. So uh, that I mean, again, it's possible we could do that. It's going to be a very interesting game. We'll preview it a little bit here upcoming. But we have a, we can make some moves. If the Bills, there's a very high chance that the Bills will lose to the Falcons. Um, I think they're on the road, uh, or maybe they're at home. You, you, they're on the road. So they're on the road. That's going to be a very tough game for them to win. And then the Patriots are at home versus the Panthers, so we can leapfrog a couple teams there this upcoming uh, this upcoming week. Um, all right, so let's get into the players you need to know about on game day. Uh, I am going to do a preview video uh, tomorrow, so I, I'm not going to get too deep into the weeds into this game in terms of scheme and what I think the the the, the uh, Saints are going to do. But I'm definitely going to highlight some players that need to have a big game. Uh, because this is a very important game, like we just discussed. We have a chance to leapfrog some people here. Um, 
especially since the Bills have a very tough game. And the Patriots have a tough game. That's not an easy game. The Panthers, are, they have a very good defense, and their offense just needs to keep up with their defense right now. And if they could do that in, in that particular game, then um, they can win that football then they can win that football game. So, again, the AFC is very claustrophobic right now. A lot of teams can take – I mean, if if the Falcons beat the Bills and then obviously if the Patriots lose, then we have a great chance of taking first place back. So it's very close. It's anybody's game right now. We just got to do what we got to do, um, and hopefully we can get a dub um, and then move up in the move up in the standings. Obviously, it's not going to be easy. We're going on the road to London. No, no NFL game is easy. Um, so hopefully we can play up to our potential in this game, and I know we can. Um, and hopefully we have a really good game plan for the Saints. So getting so previewing this game, the players that need to play well, the defensive line. It's hard to say that the defensive line needs to play well because they've played well all year. They've played. They've exceeded expectations. It sucks that the re, you know the rest of the unit on defense hasn't really kept up with them because they've played amazing. Um, and again, now that we're getting Timmons back, some of our personnel and is. We have the right personnel now to, to run the defense that we're running. It's going to be a, more effective with some of these zone blitzes, which I don't even like running these. I mean, it is what it is, but if Matt Burke's going to do it, at least he has the personnel to do it now. It, it's better personnel than the, that we had before. Um, now that Kiko can drop back in coverage a little bit more, it, it's going to be it's it's going to benefit us. So going into this game, obviously when you look at the Saints, their offensive line is atrocious. It, it's beat up. I mean, they really they don't have most of their players. Um, on that offensive line right now, it's beat up to all heck, and it's not very good. So we got to get them in down a distance for most of this game. So that means we got to stop the running game. So again, it's hard to say that the defensive line needs to play well because they are going to play well. They've been playing well. They played consistent, even though we lost against the Jets. They 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 try. I mean, when you're on the field for like half an hour and you, your offense is giving you no time to breathe, they're constantly going three and out. Then of course you're going to wear down throughout the game. But they were dominating that Jets offensive line. They're going up against an equally bad. Saints offensive line, and so if we get them in down a distance, there's a great chance we can pressure the quarterback. I know Sue's going to play well. I know Wick's going to play well. I need Devon Gotcha to play well. You know, he did not have a bad game against the Jets. He didn't have a bad game against the Chargers. That was his best game of the year so far. But he can't, I mean, obviously there were some bonehead plays there with some offside penalties. Other than that, I thought he played pretty well. So we need Devon Gotcha to really step up in this game and, and get penetration. That way, we can set up Drew Brees for third and longs, and he's going to have to make a play every third down. If he does it, he does it. I mean, he's Drew Brees. There's nothing really can do about that. But if he doesn't, I think we can put our defensive line in a great position to rush up field. Maybe Sean Payton's play calling is altered a little bit since we're getting him in third and longs constantly, and he has to check it down. Um, he can't take as many shots. He's got to call screens on third and long. Hopefully, he picks. He, he's got to hope he picks up the first down because of our pass rush. Our pass rush, um, and then when you look at the corner position, let's talk about Xavier Howard. But Byron, both of these guys have to have a good game, a relatively good game for us to win, and that starts with our defensive line. Our defensive line needs to help out our, our corners here. They're gonna probably try to utilize the quick pass game. That's how most teams are game planning for us. So we need our corner need, corners need to do a better job of tightening up coverage. Hopefully, we play more man this game than we do zone because that's gonna help us in the quick pass game. The window's a little bit tighter. Um, I would rather get beat man to man than just have a bunch of busted coverages in zone um, and let them run across the formation and then be wide open. So hopefully, that's more of the game plan this week. But the corners have to play well. The defensive line isn't going to be able to rush if the Saints are taking, you know, two-step drops and just getting the ball out of their hands as quick as quickly as possible. They're not going to be able to rush the passer. So that's on the corners. They need tighter coverage here. Um, that comes with the game plan. But Xavier and Byron need to play better. Xavier is his under. He's underachieved this this entire season. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's scheme. Maybe it's the game plan. Um, but he certainly has the talent for it. And I think we need to use you, again. We talked about this, and why one of the reasons I don't understand why we're not utilizing our personnel to their strengths. I want to see more man press with Xavier, but if he doesn't, he needs to play better. He needs to play better um, against the Saints team because if they can come out and they could just two step drops, get the ball out of their hand quick, it's going to be a long day on defense because our pass rush is going to be nullified. And I guarantee you that's the game plan going into this game. So they need to play better. These two are the keys to the game. Xavier and um, Byron, especially on defense, they need to play better. They're going up against Michael Thomas, who is a beast of a receiver, and he, he is everything that you would want in a receiver. He's big, he's fast, he's a great route runner, he's got great technique. 
the man, he's got great hands. He, he's a great receiver. He's one of the best in the league. I mean, if you watch him, it, it, it's it's like it's it's amazing. So whoever's matching up with him needs to have a good game, and that comes with stopping the quick passing game. So these two need to stop the quick pass game so we can play to our strengths and get after the quarterback. So those two need to have a good game for us to you know to have success in this football game on defense. Um, another player that needs to have a good game, switching it to the offensive side of the football, and not just one player, but as a unit this offensive line other than Cameron Jordan on the Saints defensive line there is nobody they lost Nick Fairley um they're the interior of their defensive line there's not a lot of meat there I think Sheldon Rankins is their like sec like the the only defensive lineman other than Cameron Jordan and he's not the greatest guy I mean he's a good defensive lineman but he's not a dominant he's not Leonard Williams he's not Muhammad Wilkerson but we made Steve McClendon look like uh, John Randall last week, so hopefully we can clean some of that stuff up. Um, our offensive line has to dominate a, a struggling Saints defense. They just have to. They have to dominate. Um, they need to come with their A game this game. We need to win the battle of the trenches, which we should do because we're more talented than their defensive line. So they need to move people off the football. They cannot go. They cannot go to sleep in this game. They need to dominate the trenches. They need to dominate the trenches. Trenches. If we do that, it's going to be we're going to have a lot of success on offense. They need to dominate the trenches, regardless. Um, you know, people are pointing out, okay, Adam Gase's play calling was not the greatest. The game plan was not the greatest in the world. You're right, but the players could have executed better. I mean, it's if you watch the get that game over again, the players could have executed better because they're better than that. I don't care if it's a bad play call or not. It, whether it's not, I mean, obviously we were doing things that we had success with in the past. So if they Again, I agree with you guys. Some of the play calling was wonky. I'm not disagreeing with you. But they could have executed better. So in this game, this offensive line cannot play like the offensive line that played last week. I do not understand what we saw in that Jets game because our offensive line was healthy. I don't know I don't know what it was. We just got hit in the mouth. And, you know, we struggled to run the ball last last year on this the, the Jets offense or defensive line the second Jets game that we played we, we did play very well in terms of run blocking but pass blocking was obviously blitz pickups were way better but you know hopefully in this game we can we can you know get up get up in their uh, grill knocks the people over moves the people off the ball and get JJ in running game running lanes so not to highlight one specific player on the offensive line because they all played like trash last week they need to play better they're one of the better offensive lines in the NFL you look at the performance they had when against one of the best defensive fronts in the NFL and the Saint or the Chargers, excuse me. They dominated them. I mean, not they they. I mean, they were hitting people off the ball. They were running the we were running the football with success the entire game. We were moving the ball with success the entire game. Pass protection was good. So going up going up against again, not to repeat, not to sound like a broken record, but this Saints defense is not good. Dominate the trenches. Give JJ running lanes because I know the man's coming to play. He's going back home to London. He's gonna he's gonna put up on a great. I know he's gonna have a great performance. Just help the man out. Run block, block better. All right. So another player to highlight, and this is just. I mean, this is mostly positional groups, but Jay Cutler. You know, I don't know what we saw on Sunday, and obviously some of those passes are usually we're usually see, we usually see Tannehill make some of those difficult throws on the run. Um. And obviously, fans were not were not happy with the way Jay Cutler played. He wasn't efficient. His ball placement was bad. He did not see the field well. When you go back and look at some of the some of those plays, you know, specifically if you go back and look, I mean, there's a couple plays I can point out. If you look at the, we'll point out some of them. If you look at the play to Julius Thomas, that he was like knocked in the back and it was incomplete. It was a little bit of a high throw from Jay Cutler. He had somebody wide open on the left side of the football field. It looked kind of like a cover two, but it really wasn't. Um, I can't remember what it was. I don't I don't know what coverage it was. I can't remember. But the corner drops down. It, it may have been cover two. The receiver was open. The safety did come over, but if you put it on his left shoulder, if you put it on his left shoulder, that's an easy completion. Um, and those are some of the throws we've seen Tannehill make. Um, and not only that, but obviously the start of the half, there were, you know, Jay Cutler breaks the pocket. He had Kenny Stills wide open, and he, and he skipped the football. He missed Jarvis Landry wide open in the middle of the end zone again for the second week of the row. Very, very similar plays. Very because Jarvis he was wide open in the end zone and he missed him again. Um, there was a play where he completed a pass to Jarvis Landry. We had a double move. We had a double move call on the right, 
the right side of the football field with Devontae Parker. He was wide open um, for a touchdown. Maybe not a touchdown, but it was it was a big play. Um, so, Jay needs to see the field better. Um, and maybe that comes with better pass protection because he was feeling heat the entire game. I mean, the blitz pickups were atrocious. The offensive line was playing terrible. I mean... Not, I mean, players that usually don't play bad were playing bad on Sunday. So it's not all on Jay Cutler. But he needs to see the field a little bit better. You know, spread the ball. Be efficient with the football. Um, because he has some people open. We cannot go another week with somebody being wide open in the end zone and him missing it. Um, that You can't leave points on the football field. So hopefully, I'm, again, that's chemistry. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, he hasn't played with these players for a long time. And those are completions that are easy those are easy completions he's going up against the saints defense that is bad the saints defense um to say the least they like to play man sometimes but when they do play zone you see a lot of busted coverages with the saints defense because they're young and they're not very good as a unit right now so we could take advantage of some of that and they love to blitz so if we cut if we catch them in a blitz they there's a busted coverage jay cutler needs to see it make an accurate throw um, and be efficient with the football. And then, again, just be the point guard of the offense. You know what I'm saying? Just don't – just see – if there's somebody open, you better hit him because there is going to be a lot of people open in this game, and he needs to be efficient with the football um, and move this – and move the rock down the field. So Jay Cutler needs to do a better job of being a field general and seeing the football field and getting on the same page with his receivers because in Sunday's game, I don't know if it had to do with – I don't know why, but that, that needs to – be better and the ball placement obviously needs to be better and the the efficiency needs to be better so that needs to improve this upcoming game if i swear to god if we miss another receiver wide open in the end zone um for the third week in a row uh that obviously that's not good so he he needs to get on the same page with jarvis in some of these plays i and you know it could be on jarvis i don't know because he was running a post jay threw the out big the the out which was weird and i don't know i, I don't know but Jay Cutler needs to have a better game, um, and obviously, he's going up against a bad defense. He should have a good, with the talent around him, he should have a good game. I mean, our offense should have a great game, because they're going up against a terrible defense. So, yeah, and I'm calling it like it is. It is what it is. Um, going and moving on from that, um, the receivers need to have a better game. I felt like the effort... And I'm, I notice I'm not talking about any specific players here because most of the positional groups play terrible. But the effort on Sunday's game was so bad when you look at the receiver court. If you go back and watch that game, the receivers, there was a lot of plays where they should have caught a football. Even though they were tough catches, you know, some of the plays, you know, Kenny Stills, he just got hit a little bit in the back and just, just dropped the football. Give a little bit better effort on some of those plays. I mean, you could have caught that football. If it's thrown to you, you catch the football. Help out your quarterback a little bit. I mean, some of those, I mean, again, some of them were tough catches. You're going to get hit, but make the catch. Um, and some other players to highlight in this game. He, uh, Not to get off topic, but I'll, I'll, I'm not going to go back to that. I'm rambling now, but staying on track here. The tight ends. Where have the tight ends been through the first two weeks? They're going up against uh, a defense, again, that's not very good. The tight ends need to be more involved in this game plan. And, and if we get in the red zone, I swear to God, we better toss one to Julius Thomas. He, he's not. He's he's here to do that. He is here to be that touchdown machine that we need him to be. So the tight ends need to have a better game. They need to be more active in the game plan, hopefully. Hopefully, in terms of game planning for the game, in terms in player personnel, I want to see more of Jakeem Grant involved in the game plan. I want to see more of Leonte Carew involved in the game plan. I want to see more of these guys involved in the game plan. These are high draft picks. I, I need to see Kenyon Drake. These are guys who are very talented that we have not seen. We've seen a ton of Jay Ajayi. Where's Damian Williams been? Where's Kenyon Drake been? Uh, these guys need to be more involved in the game plan. We need to get them going and use, utilize their talents more because they're very talented players, and they're too good not to, not to get the ball in their hands more. So hopefully we can get Jakeem in the, in the game plan a little bit more. Um... Jakeem, uh, Kenyon, Damian, Leonte. Some of these players need to get involved more in, in the game plan. Julius Thomas, you know, Anthony Fasano. Take more shots down the field with the tight ends. You know what I'm saying? I, there was one play where we, we did that, and this is what I was trying to refer to earlier, but I didn't want to get off track. There was one play in the Jets game. I, I can't remember. It was a tight end, but he was wide open down the seam. Like, take more shots like that. Attack this. Be more aggressive against a bad Saints offense. You know, utilize the vertical passing game more. 
Um, so I, I think that's some of the things we need to do uh, in this game uh, to, to really attack the Saints defense. I hope there's more, again, I hope more of the vertical pass game, I hope we use more of those personnel on offense more in this game because I do think it's going to help. Um, and it should, I mean, we have too much talent for, again, the guys that I named, they need to get their hands on the football more. All right, let's get into the uh, Miami Dolphins fan Q&A. Uh, this first question comes from Colin Klein. He says, well, it's time to start scouting for a corner, round one, and an offensive lineman, round two. That game was hot trash. It's hard to game plan for Miami, but it's not hard to game plan for Miami. Blitz sticks every play and drop co- uh, drop everyone else in coverage. Color was horrible. How do you throw off your back foot with no pressure? And I'm tired of... I'm tired of watching them do nothing after they got just got signed. We need Timmons and Stephon Anthony to show up already. And was Xavier Howard really that bad? Do you think we could trade Maxwell already? Our defense needs some speed. And don't get me wrong, uh, don't get me, uh, wait, and don't get me started on Tunsil, garbage. I think he allowed a sack and a half. We need to wake up already. Honestly, I'm ready to be the Cow- 2015 Cowboys and just get some high draft picks. There are some legends coming out next year. I can't wait for McDonald to cor- uh, for McDonald uh, to come back. Allen is buns. Um, can't wait to cut his uh, to cut his him. He's trash. I'm sending invites out for Dolphin draft party for 2018. Top five pack. Who knows? Maybe we trade Tannehill. Um, you know, I think it's too early to t- to take the panic to hit the panic button like that. Um. Obviously, that that was a lot to take in, but I th- I think you know the man. But I, we're going to do better. I, th- I definitely think we're going to do better. Nate Allen did not play well in the Jets game. Obviously, I mean I, I I don't know if he was just caught looking in the back. I would have to go back and look on that play. But it, it seemed like it, nobody was thirty within thirty yards of uh, Robbie Anderson. Rashad I thought had a pretty good game. I mean he took some bad angles to the football uh, on some key downs. But other than that, I thought Rashad did have a good game. Uh, I thought Wake had a good game as well. I mean, he set the edge pretty well, um, and he had obviously had a sack. So I think Cam Wake did play well. I don't, I'm not blaming that loss on the defensive line at all. I, if you if you go back and watch some of that that game, we did great. The defensive line did great. It just was it was the offense. The defense did their job, especially at the beginning of the game. You know, getting the Jets on three and out on the first drive, getting us great field position. They were backed up on their on their own end zone. They had to punt. You know, we ended it off in a sack. We had two sacks, one with Andre Branch, Cam Wake. So, just need to do a better job there. And forget and our run defense, the silver, silver lining to this is the defensive line is playing very well. This next question comes from Fly Solo 420 It says, three offside penalties in a row on the D, then two follow on two offensive fall starts in a row, and terrible clock management. Two in a row, delay of game penalties would have been three if Landry didn't call a timeout. And their performance, I would definitely rank them last. A cool thirty-two. I still can't believe how horrible we played. Yeah, it it was out of character to say the least. Um, that football team, again, that football team is too talented to play like that. Just some of the mental mistakes we shot ourselves in the foot. One of the things I hate, you know, that I'm hearing from the media and stuff like that, and it's like, oh, the jet, the Jets looked amazing on Sunday. Um, you know, the Dolphins made the Jets look. I still think the Jets were the Jets on Sunday. Um, we just didn't take advantage of certain opportunities. We shot ourselves in the foot many times in that game, especially early on, coming out as flat as we did on offense with no energy whatsoever and no rhythm at all. And no, it, it seemed like no effort. Um, and not the greatest play calling in the world and stuff like that. We just couldn't get momentum on our side. The Jets were still the Jets. They gave us opportunities to put our foot down and really take control of that football game. We just didn't do it. We hurt ourselves. I, I hate when I hear, like, if you watch that game, the Jets looked terrible throughout that first half. Everybody really looked terrible throughout the first quarter. Uh, we just didn't take advantage of any of that. Uh, Fly Solo 420 says, We need to get rid of Maxwell and build that O-line uh, out what the Cowboys did. Tunsil can be the starting piece, but everyone else needs to go. Pouncey, I don't know, who's number 77, looks terrible. The whole team played horrible. Sad day. Um... Yeah, Jesse Davis is 77. Um, I, you know, it, the the whole rotation thing with Anthony Cena and, and Jesse Davis, it works in San Diego, so hopefully it will work against the Saints. Um, yeah, nobody looked good on that offensive line. Laramie didn't look good. Uh, Mike didn't look good, which was the most surprising thing coming off the performance he had. Um, nobody looked good on that offensive line. Uh, yeah, it was it was it was a collective thing. But they're too again, they're they're talented enough to be one of the best in the league. So again, 
it just wasn't it was out of a character day man i i don't know it's not that is not the team that we're gonna see for the rest of the year um they're just too talented to, to play that way uh axel says now we know what we're going to draft first round cornerback and second round quarterback um you know uh i depending on where we are in the draft um I, I could see a cornerback being drafted. I could see a guard being drafted as well. I think the Dolphins, as an organization, are sick and tired of having this this, this question mark at the guard position. Um, and you can see how frustrated Adam gets when he when he's asked about it. And quarterback is definitely a need for this upcoming draft um, for depth reasons to free up some cap space. Um, and I, again, I've said it before, but Adam Gates needs to draft his guy. And there's again the talent pool in the quarterback, and, and, and this upcoming draft is very, very good, very good. Um, there's going to be a lot of good quarterbacks coming out of this upcoming draft. Um, so yeah, and there's going to be a lot of teams that are, are going to try to get their guy. So yeah, the Dolphins need to draft not only to to free up some cap, um, but to have the depth there. And there's a lot of good, like I said, there's a lot of good prospects. You got Baker Mayfield, uh, Mason Rudolph, uh, you know, J- you know some of the higher end guys, Josh Rosen and uh, Sam Darnold. You know, Josh Allen hasn't had a great year so far, but I don't know. Uh, you know, Locke from Missouri, he's looked good. Um, there's a lot of good quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson. There's a lot of very, there's a lot of really really good quarterbacks this upcoming draft. Um, this next question comes from. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Hulk sixty two. He says, "What do you think Adam Gates can do to stop the horrible play calling?" Have have a great day. Um, I, I don't think it was horrible play calling as much as it was. It would just was he tried to stick with the same thing and it didn't work. He just needed to get away from it earlier. After that first drive, I I guess I could see you try to go back to the same things there. Uh, but obviously it wasn't working. Um, I definitely would have loved to seen more of a, ver- of a vertical pass game, especially against that Jets secondary. Uh, but, but the way the, our offensive line was playing, it's hard to go to that because of how bad the pass protection was. So again, everything goes hand in hand. Um, he definitely should have got away from some of those things earlier on to at least spark the offense and try something different because obviously it wasn't working. Um, I don't think it was horrible play calling as much as it was. He just continued with the same things. Uh, that that's why that's the way I look at it. And again, if we executed better, um, then it obviously, if if we got favorable down and distance, you would have seen different play calls. Is what I'm saying. Instead of having third and fifteens and third and tens constantly, you definitely would have seen better play calling or different play calls if we got favorable down and distance. So it was not just Gase. It was the way the team was playing. And it was some, and not to let Gase off the hook, but you can't say it was all Adam Gase's fault. It just doesn't make any sense. The, the players did not execute anything on Sunday. Uh, and they just didn't get in fit. Again, the play calls would have been different if it was like third and three or third and short. This would have been different. Matthew Miami, 1996, and says, I was at the game and it seemed like Cutler doesn't know the offense and the tight end, Thomas, looked slow. Um... You know, most of the stuff that we've ran with Julius have been very short routes, uh, to say the least, which is weird. Um, obviously, um, you know, he's a vertical threat. I mean, that's what he does the best. He's, you know, he, the seam route, he's a great route runner. We need to use him in the vertical pass game more. We need to take more shots with him. And again, hopefully that comes with more favorable down and distance. But in the... In the Chargers game, Adam Gase obviously said it was his fault for being conservative. I hope we're more aggressive going into this Saints game. And again, that comes with the vertical passing game. Um, but I think the reason, again, Julius Thomas, some of the routes that we've asked him to run, uh, you know, not, those aren't his strengths. And obviously, we're not utilizing him to the best of his abilities as well. So hopefully, we involve him more in the vertical passing game. And I think you'll see more of Julius Thomas. And he won't, I don't think he'll look as slow uh, as he did on Sunday. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, Brandon says, Jay Cutler missed a lot of throws. Do you know why? Um, I just don't think he still saw the field well uh, enough. And again, it, it was a combination of pass protection. Um, you know, some of his throws, he was thrown off of his back foot. Uh, he didn't get a lot of, he didn't get, he didn't set his feet and make an accurate throw. Uh, those are tough throws to make. Um, you know, Tannehill, again, those, we're used to seeing Tannehill make those types of throws. And 
if you don't like Tannehill or not, Tannehill is very he, – he has great mechanics when he throws on the run. He's one of the best in the NFL at it. Uh, and you can't just throw off your back foot across your body. It's not going to be an accurate throw. So it was some of – it was mechanics. It was – he didn't see the field very well. He was not on the same page with his receivers at times. It was a mixture of all of those things. That's why he missed uh, some throws. Uh, Brandon says, Byron Maxwell is mediocre. Can we just throw our rookie in the fire? Now, I don't, even if, he doesn't have to replace Byron, Cordrea. But it does, you do scratch your head because of the preseason the man had. Um, he's a very good player. Uh, and at least he can be good on special teams. Uh, and, you know, I, I really do think, I mean, it, let's just say Byron Maxwell can't play in the Saints game, right? Uh, Cordrea needs to play. Uh, you know, I don't want to start Alteron Verner. I don't think I think Cordrea. We need to give him a chance to start in a regular season game because of the preseason he had. He's looked amazing. He's a good player. He at least needs to be activated. He needs to be in some kind of a role on game days. Um, hopefully, we do see more of him uh, throughout the for the, throughout the uh, coming weeks here. Um, and again, it doesn't it has more to do with who you want to keep on Sunday. It's not just oh, um, you know, we need Cordrea Tankersley because he's playing well. Uh, obviously, Adam Gase is keeping more offensive linemen because you never know. Uh, we're rotating Jesse uh, Davis at, at this point, Anthony uh, Steen. So there's more offensive linemen on the roster. So it has a lot to do with how many you want to keep on game day as well. So Cordrea Tankersley needs to I, – I, I think he needs to be activated on special teams, to play on special teams, and to be uh, you know used as either depth in the defensive game because obviously on Teron Werner, you're getting burned by Robbie Anderson out here. Cordrea, I think, could be uh, – he's a rookie – but I think, you know, he, he adds great depth and he can be used on special teams. Uh, this, next, this next question comes from Ronald. He says, this game plan on Gase, this game goes on Gase for offensive, uh, for his game plan and Burke on defense. How can you let those two off the hook? Uh, I'm not letting them off the hook. Um, you know, I brought it up in the, the recap video. I thought Matt Burke, his, he did not use the personnel well. with, with the, the, the personnel that he had in that game, I, I still believe that, when you look at what Byron and what Xavier do and what their strengths are, it's man press. It's not soft zone. It's not you know a soft squat or in a, in a Tampa two or something stupid like that. It's it's getting up in the receiver, being physical with them, um, and really getting them off the route and letting the pass rush get up the field. And that's why we drafted them. Is to really affect uh, timing offenses and quick passing game offenses. You see what the New England Patriots love to do. It's a, it's a bunch of timing. It's very quick. They kill zone because of that. So that's why we drafted a bunch of really good man corners. We brought in Byron Maxwell. What he did best throughout his career is man press. What Xavier did best at uh, Baylor is man press. What Cordrea did, be what he did best at Clemson was man press. So why we're not man pressing with these corners, I have no idea. Now, Altron Werner. He's a big long corner. He, what he does best is man coverage. Same thing when Tony Lippett was here. What he had, what he did best throughout his career here is man coverage. Even though he's probably a better off the play, off the ball corner than most of the corners we have on this roster. That's on Matt Burke. I'm not letting him off the hook for that. I honestly don't know why we didn't shorten the throwing area for Josh McCown. Really shorten the the uh, the throwing windows and make him make a difficult pass. And again, when you look at some of the throws that Josh McCown had on Sunday. It was the linebacker was looking in the backfield, and he was, and then wide, he was the receiver was wide open behind the linebacker. If we don't, we we can we can scheme and game plan over that and just use our corners. And if you put them on an island, you don't really have to put them on an island. You can give them help over the top. You can shade over the top. You could do some of those things if you're not as confident as leaving some of these players on an island. But they're very good in man press. And they're very good in man coverage, so we need to do more of that. I'm not letting them off. I'm not letting Matt Burke off the hook for that. the The whole Adam Gase thing is different, though, because they're not. They just didn't execute anything. I mean, if the players executed better, I'm not letting Adam Gase off the hook. But it's not just him, and I'm. That's just my opinion on it. It's not just Adam Gase. It was the players as well. They really came out flat. There was no rhythm. You know, Jay Cutler was not making some of those throws. Um, the blocking was atrocious. Uh, so those those are some of the things. That, I mean, what do you want the man to do? The pass protection was bad. I mean, you're not you really can't take deep shots down the football field. You can't run some of those play action passes that we're so good at because we were down most of the game. So a lot of the play calling had to do with the situation we were in as well. So it's not just on Gase; it's on the players um, as well. 
Ronald, uh, this question, next question comes from Ronald. He says, part of the reason the Dolphins were so flat is because of some of the, some of the team captains are not really true leaders. Like, nobody doubts Jarvis Landry as a leader because in week two versus the Chargers, Juice goes in at halftime and goes off for about three minutes talking about the effort, everything, about the effort and everything. Uh, and they come out fired up. What do you think, Skaggs? Um, I, do, I do think that we should have seen more especially on the sideline, I agree with you on that. Like, we should have seen more of somebody getting the defense huddled up. You see this with the Seattle. We see this with, you know, the t- consistent football teams. If things aren't going your way and you need a spark, it doesn't always come on the football field. Sometimes it does come on the sideline. Sometimes it takes a, you know, a Cameron Wake who a, we have a bunch of young players on this football team. Those people look up to and they will listen to them. Um, and sometimes you need your players to get them together, fire them up, call people out, get everybody going, get everybody, get a spark, get so, get effort, and something happening. You know, again, sometimes it, sometimes it doesn't come on the football field. Sometimes you need a leader to, to you know to get everybody going, to get everybody fired up. And you didn't see that. I mean, it was just flat all day, uh, especially on offense more than it was defense. I mean, the defense line was very active for the start of that football game. Obviously, it dwindled down as the game went along, but. Um, it just, it was, it was just flat. It was really, really flat. It wasn't the same passion that we saw in even preseason when DeMore Stringfellow scores a 99-yard touchdown and our entire sideline is going crazy. Like, that needs to be, and that's the culture that Abgase has built. It's still there. No player in that locker room is, is, is upset, but I do agree. I wish we'd have seen more yelling at each other. I wish we would have seen more of that, um, and trying to get everybody back on the on the right page. I do agree with that. I do think we have good leaders on this football team. I think the culture in the locker room um, is very good. You know, when you hear old Dolphins players like Fasano and Cam Wake talk about it, it makes you smile because it's like they understand what the organization was before Adam got here, and they, even when they say there is a difference, you can, I mean, obviously you believe them because they, they went through all that dysfunction. Um, so... I, I don't think it has I don't think it's the culture is bad I don't think any of that I think it just I think it was just um who knows what it was um but I definitely wish we'd have seen more of that I do agree with you Ronald but I, I don't think the leadership is bad on this team uh, this next question comes from Ryan he says why did we put uh, why didn't we put in Matt Moore do you think we would have had a better shot um no, I mean he would have made some of those throws, uh, especially the one wide open to Juice in the end zone, which is a play that we've we've run with Kenny before, um, and it was a play action pass and the Jets fell for it. <laughs> Down we were they were up what at the time twenty to maybe twenty or seventeen nothing I don't remember, uh, but you got to make that throw. I think um, if Matt was in the game at the beginning of the game. He definitely would have made more throws um, and probably been a little bit more efficient, but he wouldn't have been able to survive that pass protection in that game. Uh, it would have been probably the same result. We, I th- we definitely still would have lost because just everything else was just so bad. Uh, going on to the next question, uh, see, or excuse me, the next question comes from Ron, uh, Ryan. He says, how long do you see not letting Timmons play? Obviously, earlier in the show, uh, Timmons is coming back which I think is going to help us from a schematic standpoint. I think some of those zone blitzes are going to be way more effective. I think some of the coverage is going to be tighter. So I think it's, it's going to improve a lot of things. Uh, Jacob, and it's going to help with communication as well. Jacob, and it's going to help with the leadership thing uh, and veteran leadership. When Again, when you're down like that, um, when you come out that flat against a bad football team, you know, it, you wish somebody, somebody would be like, listen, we cannot continue to play like this because this, the game was within reach the entire first half and throughout most of the second half where it was like, we got to match this. We got to match this. We can't keep doing this. We can't keep doing this. Like, we just didn't see it on Sunday. It was weird. We're not, I'm not used to seeing that from an Adam Gase football team. and it, it, That was the only time I really have ever seen it that flat. Uh, what was the question? Oh, yeah, Tim, yeah Timmons is coming back. He's going to play versus New Orleans. Uh, Jacob B says, "How many more years in this <laughs> is this team not going to perform to the level to the level of their ability? What a shameful display in Jersey. We will 100% lose next week versus New Orleans and London. The secondary is a joke. I I wouldn't say that. I don't, I don't think you need to be that like the faithful like 
again, this team is very good. It just wasn't a good performance. The execution was bad. The X and O's, the X and the X's and O's part of football in that game was just bad. Um, we have the players to play at a high level. It just comes down to execution. It comes down to some other things. Football isn't just showing up. Obviously, there's a, there's a lot more things that go into it from preparation um, and to execution. is very, very important in this game. And the mental aspect of football is very good, is very important, not just from being smart, but keeping your composure um, and, 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 and never lulling yourself to sleep even though you're facing an opponent like the Jets. So... It, th- those are the things that failed us. I'm, I'm definitely. I this our football team is more talented than the Saints, and that's that's just I'm stating facts. From from defense to offense, you would pick our roster over theirs because it's just built better. So we should again perform like we should. With that pr- the product that you saw on the football field was not us. Um, Jacob, let's see here. I think. Uh, oh, yeah, this next question comes from some guy. He says, well, uh, okay, uh, he's talking about, he says, uh, well, the lock arms, it's all dairy while they discuss, uh, what happened. He's referring to the, uh, the national anthem thing. Phil Osa? I don't know how you say your uh, name, man, but I think, you know, I'm talking, it's F-I-L-O-S-A. Phil, 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 I don't know. Uh, I think the main issue on both sides of the field was the line. Josh McCown was not pressured nearly enough. And the offensive line gave almost nothing for Ajayi to work with, and Cutler not much protection. Do you think the Do you think another unit shares more blame? Uh, I'm not panicking. The rival. It, this is a rivalry game. Rivalry game in New York. Um, so you said okay. The, I think the Josh McCown pressure issue was just we didn't have tight enough coverage. He was getting the ball out of his hands too quick. There were just wide open people. Um, you don't have to. I mean, you can't pressure somebody when they hike the ball and there's somebody wide open in the flat or there's somebody wide open in the middle of the football field. It's hard to do that. So it, it had to, just the tighter. We just need tighter coverage on some of those plays. And again, the defense played well for most of the for most of the game except towards the end there. Um, let's see here. Uh, and and the, the, yeah, the, the protection was bad. Uh, the protection. The offensive line played atrocious. And when that happens, it's hard to have success in the NFL. Uh, this next question. This next question comes from uh, Cantor. He says, "If you look around the NFL, many teams lost to the underdog team. Example: Pittsburgh, Chicago. Chicago won. Was the Jets uh, a great example of this? I answered this in, in, in previously. Yes, it, it, it's a very good example. For some reason, not, not just in the you know the, the Broncos lost, the Raiders lost. Uh, obviously, you point out the Bears lost on the road. Uh, the Bengals almost won in Lambeau. Uh, it, it was a really weird day for road teams. Um, uh, it, it was a weird day. It, I think." Again, you don't see all of those teams panicking, so we shouldn't panic. I we have a very very talented roster. I don't know how many times I have to say this. It's not like we're uh, we have a bad roster. This next question comes from Ronald. He says trade Xavier Howard for a third round pick, trade Kenny Stills for a third round pick, cut Julius Thomas, trade Werner and a fourth round pick to Rams for Tremaine Johnson. Yes, no, I don't think we should just destroy the roster after one football game. Again, it's one we've played two games and one of them we had a bad performance. The set in the first one we didn't have the greatest performance either. Uh, but it, we beat a really good Chargers team on the road. Um, we lost, I have no idea. There was a, a many other, you don't see the Raiders saying we need to cut, you know, uh, TJ Carey and, I mean, even though those, you know, some of those players aren't very good, but they're not tearing down their roster after one game, even though they had a very bad performance against the Redskins. Who they're to the, I mean, obviously they're a more talented football team. Their offensive, their offensive line with Clutch Go Stanley, Rodney Hudson, Donald Penn, their offensive line played terrible against the Redskins. And that offensive line is a top five offensive line in the NFL, and they just did not block. I mean, it is what it was a weird day. I don't think we need to tear down the roster after one football game. Cypherox says, "Do you think our offensive was were the result of bad play calling or lack of it? No, it was. Any time that happens, that's just lack of execution. And you, you see Steve McClendon coming in free in the interior of the offensive line. That's nothing. That has nothing to do with play calling. I mean, if it was a, if it was a bad, badly drawn up play, but the, the plays that we were running, we usually have success with. So that was just bad execution. Uh, and obviously, Gay should have got away from it earlier. He didn't. He stuck with the game plan." Um, he stuck with what we usually do well, what our comfort level is. He should have got away from it earlier. Obviously, Todd Bowles had a good game, a game plan. He had a very good game plan for it. And you knew that we, in the past, when you look at the road game that we had last year against the Jets and the home game, even though we had 100 yards rushing in the home game, we didn't dominate the trenches. 
So he knew that that was still going to be a theme because they have rel- they have relatively the same defensive line with Leonard Muhammad. They, the Sheldon's not there anymore. So it was just he needed to get away from it earlier, but it was lack of execution for the most part. Now, should Adam have gotten away from some of that stuff? Yes, he should have earlier. It wasn't working. They had a good game plan for it. He should have got away from it. So it's both sides, but mostly execution. The next question comes from DeAnthony. He says, what are your thoughts on Julius Thomas being relevant in the passing game? I think we need to use him more vertically than we do. Like some of these fly routes, just uh, just use his talents a little bit better. Uh, I don't think it's, I think it's more on just the usage here. Uh, Will, will the real Kalen Wake show up soon? The question comes from Ronald. I think he had a good. I thought he, he had a, a, a good game against the, the Jets. He just, he just uh, didn't go so well on offense. This next question comes from Ronald. He says, "How long is the head coach gonna stick with a garbage in a linebacker, Mike Cole, a hard garbage free safety, Nate Allen, and cornerback who can't cover an Xavier Howard? These fools aren't being burned every single play." To be fair, Ronald, you've never liked Xavier Howard, and don't even lie about that. You've always complained about him. I, I, I still have faith in, uh, in, in Xavier. It's been two games. If he continues to do this over a 16-game season, obviously he's just not the player we thought he was. But I, have, I still have faith he's gonna show up. Uh, middle linebacker Mike Cole, yeah, I do agree. He needs to be benched. Um, and Nate Allen, he needs to play better. We have really no other options. I mean, maybe Walt Aikens, but, I mean, I don't know. I, I think we're going to have to stick with Nate Allen for these these, these next eight games. But we expected this from Nate Allen. It's not like – I mean, I think he can play better than he has. Um, we'll see. But I, I, I think he'll have a bounce back. Hopefully he'll have a bounce back performance. But I do agree with you on Mike Cole. Uh, Ronald says, uh, tr- uh, trade, uh, Ronald says, uh, trade for Richard Sherman. Do fools even watch uh, Sherman stink up the field? Oh, you're saying you don't want to trade for Richard Sherman. I don't want to give up a first round pick for Richard Sherman, that's for sure. That's his asking price, so. Uh, Chicken, Chicken Weed Boy says, uh, do we draft a quarterback the first two rounds next year? Yes, it's gonna happen. The game, be- not, and again, that's not because we have poor quarterback play. It's because of the cap and depth and the talent pool. Uh, the, the gamer one two three four five says, "What are your thoughts on players kneeling during the national anthem?" My opinion is, let them kneel if they want to. I don't really want to. T- I mean, it, that's more of a political thing uh, than it is anything. So we'll move on from that. A- uh, Axel, this question from Axel says, "We need Richard Sherman urgently, and Mike Cole needs to get replaced because he's garbage." I don't think we need Richard Sherman, but yes, Mike Cole. Yeah, he needs to get. He needs to be benched. I agree with you. Hopefully that happens with Lawrence Timmons. And Stephon Anthony's on the roster too, so hopefully, maybe we traded him to be the outside line. I'm hoping that's what happens. I don't think he'll play Sunday. Hopefully he does, but I doubt it. Man Gamer says, uh, I think we should trade for Bobby, I think we should trade a Bobby McCain, a fourth round pick, uh, and wait because he's old for a Miles Garrett, Derek Barnett, Jabal Shear, or Trey Flowers, and a Joe Hayden, uh, Chef Ramsey, Jalen Ramsey, Richard Sherman, Marcus Peters, or uh, Jabriel Peppers, Emily Cooker. Nobody's going to trade for a fourth round pick or Bobby McCain for any of those players. Those are, very, those are all young, except Joe Hayden and Richard Sherman. Those are all young developmental guys that, that, that are very good. Uh, F- Fly Solo says, uh, let's see here. Uh, boy, what, what are you. Li- oh, all right, he's responding to that. Um, Man Gamer says, uh, what what big trade do we need to do? We don't need to trade anything. Uh, Man Gamer says we need we don't need a new defensive coordinator. He just needs to hopefully he doesn't stick stick with this. Man Gamer says uh, and it should should get better with Lawrence Timmons with some of those zone blitzes. Um, let's see here. Ian says uh, Ian says uh, it's not a fire sale yet. A lot of our starters I don't have confidence in, but we shouldn't be trash, and that's what we look like. It, and he says. Uh, sh- are we good as we think? Yeah, we're a very good team. We just did not execute well on Sunday. And we overlooked our opponent. We came out flat. I mean, we just, it felt like we could just show up to the game. And obviously, you can't do that in the NFL. Uh, see, Peyton, uh, this question comes from Peyton. He says, do you think our offense today was honestly the real deal and they weren't just giving up? Um, they just didn't play well. They're, they didn't come out that, with any energy. I'm not going to say they gave up, but they just didn't come out with any energy. Uh, or any kind of rhythm at all, and hopefully that touchdown, the la- that touchdown drive against the Jets, gets some kind of spark and chemistry and momentum with the team, uh, and gets us going. Because big plays like that will get the team going. Uh, Peyton says, uh, "Do you think we should trade for Richard Sherman, whatever the cost?" No. Peyton says, "I believe we should try trade for Landry uh, for Bridgewater." No, I don't think I don't think we should do that. Uh, that is going to be. Wait, hang on. I think we got one more question. We got a bunch more questions. Uh, I just can't. We're running out of time here. Um, that is going to be it, guys. I am Skags1383. Uh, I think 
we're gonna I'm gonna save the questions that I didn't answer for next week's podcast and we'll fill some of that in. Um, but if I didn't get your question, I'm so sorry. Uh, this 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 podcast is went a little long. But I am Skagster Chain. And if I didn't answer your question, uh, please let me know. If I keep missing your question and and you're frustrated, let me know who you are so I can put you in front of the show next next week. I am Skagster Chain 83, and I will see you guys in the next one.